All right, guys, we are going to learn about one of my favorite things to actually do, and it's called ink washes. And ink washes, very similar to doing watercolors. All right, guys, so we're going to start by, you've already drawn out your four circles, your four cubes, and your four cones. Um, before we get started, you need to know how to actually set, set this whole thing up. And to set this up, what you're going to need is a water container with water in it. You're going to need some ink, two paint brushes, a, a large one and a small one, a paper towel folded up. and a palette. All right, you're going to start with your palette. And the very first thing you're going to do is you're just going to simply put about two drops. I can paint a whole piece of paper black with that much ink. It literally is just two drops. You don't even have to squeeze the bottle. All right, a little bit about paintbrushes, because I truly did not like working in wet media, um, like watercolors, really didn't even like painting, because a lot of it is I didn't know how to actually paint. And so it was interesting to me. I, I worked at a place where there was a guy who was actually a painter, but he actually was a tattoo artist. And he started teaching me how to do watercolors. And so these are some of the same techniques that you would use in watercolors. So the first thing he taught me was, hey, you have to have good paint brushes to actually be able to paint well. And so we're going to talk just a little bit about the five parts of a paintbrush. So obviously everybody knows that there's a handle and then there's a metal part right here called a ferrule. And the ferrule is what holds the bristles. And the bristles actually has three different parts. The very tip of it is called the toe. Where the ink or paint goes into it is actually called the belly. And then where it connects to the ferrule is actually called the heel. So if you had me at middle school, you probably already know this. And then, of course, you need a water container. All right. So with your paper towel folded up, you'll use this paper towel tremendously a whole lot. You have your two paint brushes. You have your ink and you have your paper. So again, it only requires just a little bit of ink. All right, so again, it just requires just a little bit of ink. So a couple things about paintbrushes, guys. Don't leave the paintbrushes in the water containers. It will ruin it. These are actually nylon-tipped paintbrushes. And if you really look at what they do, they'll actually spring back into shape. And that's what makes them so nice. I know many of you guys have used paintbrushes before. and be like, I don't like to paint. A lot of that has to do with that you didn't like the paintbrushes. I spent probably close to $200 on this new paintbrush set for our classroom. So... Needless to say, these are very good paint brushes. I use these at home. So the first thing you are, are going to do is you're going to take the bigger brush. This one happens to be an eight. If you notice on the little, on the there's numbers on paint brushes. This is an eight and this is a six. Truly, you just want two big ones or a, a big one and a small one. Whoops. So I have two paint brushes here. I have an eight and a six. You just need two different sizes to make this work. Again, don't leave your paintbrushes in a water container because it will ruin a paintbrush in a hurry. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paintbrush and you're going to go do your circle. And if you dab just a little bit of water, and this is where it's tricky trying to figure out how much water you actually need and you paint the water inside the pencil lines that you just painted, this is creating a wash. 
Little Chris used to call this a spit shading. And so what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to let you see how much water is actually there. You can see how it's shiny on the whole thing. You want it to be shiny. All right, so when you're getting ink or paint into a palette, so many times I see kids just jet, jam their paintbrushes into the, the palette. And that ruins a paintbrush. If you get paint or ink inside the ferrule of a paintbrush, it actually ruins it. So what you're going to do is you're going to tip, put just a little toe of the paintbrush into the media. And a good paintbrush, which many of you guys have not used, will literally suck up into the belly almost like a straw. Once you have your paintbrush loaded, you're going to go back down to your circle and just right on the edge, very gently, you're going to run it around that circle. At this point, it's still wet enough to where you can now take your other brush, dry it off a little bit on their towel, and you can actually push those values around. This is called an ink wash or spit shading. So if you feel like your value is too dark, you can literally dry off your brush completely and then do what's called mopping. And you literally, it's just like mopping a floor. You mop up a little bit, dry it off on your paper towel. Mop up a little bit, dry it off on your paper towel. So you build your values up slow. <clears throat> right now, I still, this value right here is actually too dark in my opinion, as far as that line is too harsh. So after it dries, I can actually come back and I can build that value up again slowly. Right now, it is actually way too wet to do that. And so I'm gonna move on to the other one and I'm gonna show you it one more time. Again, when I'm doing this, guys, this is fun because it's a lot like glass blowing, and you guys know I like to make glass. <clears throat> glass is a liquid, right? When it's hot, well, watercolors and ink washes is a liquid. And so it's like you have to be fluid when you do it. There's really, like, once you do it, there's no really turning back. You make a commitment, you say, all right, I got to make this work before the paper dries. And this paper, again, is great for practicing, but it is not the best paper to do ink washes on. And I have real nice paper that we'll use for our narrative projects. So let's say you're like, oh my gosh, Mr. Bishop, I went way too dark. Another technique to, instead of mopping, you can actually take a paper towel and you can lift. All right, and so this is just a very basic ink wash. What I would like for you guys to do today is simply on the four spheres, try to set up and do an ink wash. You can also, if you want, you can experiment with line quality once you get done with those and try pushing your paintbrush on a very small line and then getting a thick line. And so just experimenting it's, with paintbrushes and ink, you can actually have more water in your belly before you go into the ink, and that'll give you a lighter value. And so today, guys, you're going to 